What up? This is Rama Screen, and in the celebration of Raya and the Last Dragon, which is now available for you to check out both in theaters and on Disney Plus Premiere Access, I'm here talking with one of the voice stars of this new film, Jonah Shao. How are you, Jonah? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for that. Um, I'm really proud of how well Raya is doing right now. Um, I think it's like 95% on Rotten Tomatoes, and I love how much people are really responding to the movie. So I'm really happy to see that. Yes, and uh, I can relate to it more because of because uh, I'm Southeast Asian, and we're so yes. happy with the result of the film, and I hope that it gets nominated for Oscar next year. That's oh, me too. Movie. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. The uh, a lot of the lands um, across uh, the movie are actually inspired by various countries in the southeast, uh, in Southeast Asia, which is yeah. really cool. So, tell me, Jonah, um, how did you get on board the project? I understand that you previously also did a short circuit for Disney. Did that connection kind of lead you to landing the role in Raya? Actually, um, the opposite. Oh. <laughs> I originally um, booked Raya. Uh, like th it's been almost three years. I worked on the film almost like about three years where I initially came on board to help uh, voice some of the earlier versions of the various characters. So I actually played Raya in like the first seven versions of the movie. So when they were doing, when Disney was doing their internal screenings and everything, I was really grateful to be part of that process and see how much the story and the characters were changing and evolving um, as they were developing the project. So uh, I just auditioned through my voiceover agent to get that role. And then um, because of the internal screenings that Disney was doing with the early versions of Raya and the Last Dragon, um, I got booked on some other Disney projects, including Short Circuit. So yeah, it uh, all worked out for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Now, um... I, I know the adult Namari is voiced by Gemma Shan, but your Namari is about maybe 14, 15 years old. Is that correct? Yeah, um, somewhere around like 12, 13 years old. Yeah. You're not a teenager, obviously, but uh, talk to me about the process of uh, voicing this character. Did you have to change your inflection, your cadence in any way? Sure. So I adjust my voice a little bit. So normally my voice sits here. So I just elevated it a little bit more for young Namari's voice. Uh, so it's really cool to get to see that um, some flashback sequences of young Namari and young Raya that shows uh, some of the history of the relationship these two powerful ladies have had. Let's talk about the animation. Um, what was your reaction when you first saw the design for the character of young Namari? I mean, because if people were to ask me what I love the most about Namari, uh, the design is that her hairstyle. I mean, that hair <laughs> is to die for. <laughs> Yes, I think uh, young Namari and normal, regular Namari's <laughs> hair looks badass. Yes. So, yeah, I love that she has her, I, I think there's a lot of different versions of beauty and we uh, shouldn't just subscribe to one, which is like, oh, the long flowing hair. And I love her short haircut. Like she's a fighter, she's a warrior. And so uh, I think her hairstyle really works well for her. Um, so I think when you look at the character, especially um, Namari, like she looks like a badass. And so I think um, the animation across the whole movie is gorgeous. And that's something that a lot of viewers and critics have brought up as one of one of the many strong suits of the movie. Uh, talk to me through the, the process of the voicing itself. I mean, did you stand in a booth? Did you interact with the other actors? How did that work? Sure. So most of the time voiceover is very much like each actor by themselves and doing mm. all of their own dialogue. So when I, um, I did a lot of the recording in studio, especially during the development phase. So I got to work with various um, directors along that uh, throughout the process uh, from like Paul Briggs to Dean Wellens. I got to also act opposite like Adele Lim, one of the writers. So they would kind of each alternate. Um, uh, Oznat as well, one of the producers, like they would read opposite of me. And um, so they would read the other characters lines and I would be in the booth um, reading the lines of whatever character I was voicing for that day. So it was really fun to get to <laughs> work with the creative team in such an intimate way. And then when the pandemic hit, we, um, I think it was like 500 people across all the cast and crew working remotely from home. So I recorded on my blue Yeti, try and true mic right here in the corner of my <laughs> office. 
And then um, there was a time where I was in Europe and they needed a fast turnaround on one of the voices. So I literally was, um, it wasn't even like a closet that you, it was like a cabinet <laughs> closet where I, I, you, I had to open it. And I was like this and like recording. And Adele was so sweet. She did all the like line readings to like show the inflection. So I was listening to that and then would do my voice. And then I'd listen to her and then do my voice. Um, so yeah, I think that was probably a ridiculous sight to see if you were there. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like that more compared to live action in high town, for example? Oh, <laughs> you've done your research. <laughs> nice. Um, you know, I like both for different reasons. So I, I love the flexibility of voiceover, um, because I was in a closet in Europe, <laughs> like, like this recording, right? Not the most ideal situation, of course. Um, but I think the, the flexibility of the schedule is fun. And just, I don't have to think at all about my body and, and where it is. And, and am I moving too much? Um, because with voiceover, it's like, I, you definitely want to use like your full body. So there's a lot of action sequences. And so like, I'm gripping things I'm um I think there's a lot of really great freedom in that because it's just the voice and every you use your entire body to communicate through your voice and then with live action um there's just uh, a lot more pieces <laughs> in terms of being like having to be a lot more conscious of what my body is doing and am I like the framing of the shot so I think they're different types of challenges so I really love both of them actually so I love that I get to do both. Yes, and I'm happy for you for that. And the movie is already out there. So it's not really a spoiler here, but for my fans who haven't seen it, um, <laughs> Namari basically did something that made Raya distrust people over the years. So uh, let me ask you, um, yeah. what, 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 what's your take on Namari? She's not really a villain, right? In my mind, no, I okay. am team Namari, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I am biased. Uh, so yeah, in the film, um, some things transpire where um, Raya loses trust in people and in the world, understandably, especially after what um, Namari did. If you want to know what she did, watch Raya and the Last Dragon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I truly believe, maybe this is naive, that there aren't really bad people in the world. Hmm. I know, I just said it. I just don't, I just don't, I think there's a lot of bad actions that people do, but I don't, really believe that people are bad so similarly with namari i think she did what she thought she had to do i agree with the actions she took throughout the film no not as me as jonah however i don't see her as a villain and i don't think most people ever see themselves as the villain so i think she did what she had to do she thought she had to do to protect her own people so was it the best choice no but i don't think it makes her evil Having done Short Circuit and Raya now, uh, The Last Dragon, you're officially part of the Disney family. How does that make you feel? <laughs> does that, does that, what does it I, mean for you to be part of a Disney legacy of these wonderful animations? Oh man, I'm very grateful because I grew up loving so many Disney movies and like, I mean, Mulan was my favorite. <laughs> so yes. yes so it was so cool to especially be part of a project like Raya that reminds me a lot of Mulan in many ways because she's like a badass Asian um you know fighting princess <laughs> so um I I love being part of the Disney family and um it's I would love to do more Disney movies wink wink hint hint Disney <laughs> I hope so too. It's out there in the universe now. So yes, absolutely. <laughs> As I'm winding down, I got to ask you this um, mm -hmm. profound question. I'm Asian and I always champion Asian actors and Asian films and Asian stories. Thank you for doing that. But let me ask your honest, uh, honest opinion. Do you mm -hmm. think Hollywood has come to the point where they are taking us Asians more seriously rather than boxing us into the usual stereotypical roles? Or is this still an uphill battle for us? Great question. Um, in my experience, as of late, I find that the industry is truly, uh, and by industry, I mean Asians and non-Asian industry professionals are really making an effort to be more inclusive um, in all ways, um, with sexual orientation, um, ethnicity, all of the above. So I'm seeing great progress, especially from years ago. I remember walking into an audition years ago and the director asked if I could speak Korean. 
And I was like, no, I don't speak Korean. I speak Mandarin. And she's like, but can you also speak Korean? And I was thinking, do you re- does this woman not know that these two are very different languages? <laughs> it's not like they're interchangeable, you know? And I, I, I'm glad to say, um, as of late, I've actually had producers and showrunners call me like on Hightown, Rebecca Cutter, who's an amazing showrunner. She called me and was like, Hey, um, you know, I just want to be true to like your particular ethnicity. Are you open to sharing with me? Like what your ethnicity is? And I'm like, Oh yes, I'm at like 99% Chinese. And she's like, great. So I, I've gotten those phone calls more often now where people really want to, um, show a true representation. Um, so I think we are moving in the right direction. There's still more fighting to be done. In my opinion, we are not done. Um, but, but we are on our way, uh, in terms of Asian American representation. Thank you for sharing that. And for my fans who are fans of Hightown, when will season two premiere and what can they anticipate from this new season, specifically from your character, Daisy? Sure. So um, Hightown season two, I think is going to come out sometime this fall. My best guess is sometime around August or September. So if you haven't seen season one, um, watch it on Stars, Amazon. It's a a really nitty, uh, it's a really gritty crime drama. So I, my character Daisy comes in on season two. I'm a working class woman who is bubbly on the outside, but uh, has this really hard edge. So um, similar and very different from young Mari and Raya. So you'll see my character often stuck between a rock and a hard pit place and have to make some really difficult decisions. Um, and I got to work opposite Luis Guzman for a lot of um, the episodes that I'm on. So that was a joy. So you're, you can expect a lot of humor, drama, and crazy fun twists in season two. And finally, are you allowed to share a bit about your current badass action show that you're currently working on? (laughs) (laughs) So you may have noticed I am, I'm in a hotel room right now. Um, I am in Canada uh, filming a popular action TV show. So what can I say? Um, you will most likely, I think this will air in May. Um, and actually, I think it might be slated to air on my birthday, May 18th. So I can reveal more details as it comes. But um, I will say there's some uh, really interesting, what am I allowed to say? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm allowed to say. Um, there's a lot of action and humor and fun and levity in this show. And for my character specifically, she's someone who once again um, is trying her best to help the world, but does it in a very unique way. (laughs) Let's put it that way. (laughs) I cannot wait. I don't know. I might have already told you too much. (laughs) You you got that out of me, Rama. (laughs) I don't want to get you in trouble, but thank you for getting us stoked for that. So um, for my fans at home, everybody go check out Raya and the Last Dragon available in theaters and on Disney Plus premiere access. Jonah Shao, thank you for talking to me and congratulations. Thank you so much, Rama. I'll talk to you later. 